What's going on everybody? And in this week's video, we are gonna check out some more Drop D goodness from Alice in Chains. Except this time, we're gonna dive into the track Last of My Kind off the Black Gives Way to Blue album. Now, I recently did a Drop D Alice in Chains riff video, and there were several comments down the description saying that the post Lane Stanley era had a lot of great songs and great riffs, and I fully agree, but that video didn't really touch on any of those. So I figured it'd be fun to dive in, check out the whole song. Tuning, real fast, we are in a drop D tuning, but the entire song is down a half a step. Technically drop D flat tuning, right? Every string down a half step, down in the description below, you can find a link for the tabs that are going on. Now we're gonna focus mainly on the rhythm guitar and the guitar solo. Typical Alice in Chains, there's a lot of secondary guitar tracks, held out notes, bends, all that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna deep dive into any of that, just gonna look at the rhythm guitar parts and the solo, and that should give you a good foundation, then you can kind of dive in and play those secondary parts. Because when you play along with the song, probably not gonna be playing those parts anyway, you're gonna be playing the, the rhythm guitar part, all right? So, the song drops off and the intro riff, the verse riff, it's all the same thing, and that sounds like this. <laughs> So we have basically drop D power chords, single single finger, same fret, two strings, right? We're gonna go up to four and pick out the power chord. And then essentially hit the A string, slide the power chord up to five, right? Let that note ring out and then a quick slide up to seven and then reverse that. Just pick out the power chord, seven, five, four. put an open at the end of it. And that's that main riff. Okay, you do it four times. On the fourth time, there's a slight variation, like a turnaround on the riff. It's seven, eight, five, rather than seven, five, four. Like that, okay? So you're gonna do that, and the verse is gonna come, it's the same thing. Now, he does play this riff with a wah pedal during the intro. Um, I don't have a wah pedal set up for this, but just know that. Okay, and then when you get to the verse, you can take the wah pedal off. Okay, so we're gonna go through that multiple times and then we get to the next section and that sounds like this. Okay, that's that section and it's really simple. We have five to seven. Hammer on there, and then we're gonna chug with an accent pattern, open mute mute on that seventh fret. And then you have seven, eight, five, open. That part's a little tough to hear. If you play it a little differently, I've seen people go down to three. That's just kind of what feels right. If you play it a little different, or it's, like I said, it's a little hard to hear, roll with it, right? Take everything on YouTube with a grain of salt. We're just having some fun here, okay? That is that riff. You go through four times, and at the end of it, you do a little chromatic line, eight, seven, six, five. And then we go into the next part, which sounds like this. That riff, okay? And this is, again, the song gets a little aggressive, right? We start playing that note right there, which is essentially a flat five or a tritone, AKA a tension note, right? And this is the part of the song, the harmony introduces a tension tritone note, and then the band gets aggressive, and then the vocals, there's, you know, he gets angry, and there's curse words in there, right? Drops a big F-bomb in there, and it's fitting for that section of the song because that's what the harmony represents. So we're gonna play a power chord on the first fret, and then chug on two of the low string. And then we're gonna repeat that eight, seven, six, five line. Except this time, that five is gonna be a quarter note. Okay? And now, after that, basically the song is on repeat, right? There's really no new sections yet. 
it repeats. When we get to that section we just did, it's actually twice as long, okay? And then we get into the breakdown riff, which then leads into the solo, which is pretty cool. Typical metal drop D kind of stuff. Uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> Very cool riff, right? So it starts off one open, and then we kind of shift up two, three, two. I like to hammer on three to two, just flows nice. Oh, five. And then chromatically down four, three, open two, three, right? and then bring back that two, three, two, right? Okay, now the riff is gonna basically repeat, but we're gonna shift some of those notes up. It's still one, two, two, three, two. That's the same. We jump up now in 07. Same motion, seven, six, five just like the previous one was five, four, three, right? So it's six, five, open, two, three, two. And once again. And that is that riff, right? It's the breakdown riff, and then they play the solo over it, okay? So I'm gonna just keep going for the rhythm and guitar, and then we'll come back for the solo a little bit later. Okay, so again, there's really no new parts here. Honestly, there's really no new parts. We, we start re repeating things. Um, we start moving to the outro a little later on in the song and you're basically gonna start chugging on that second fret power chord and then there's a wah scale riff and that sounds like this. You have this very kind of pentatonic -y, bluesy kind of thing that's happening right here. We're gonna go two, five, seven, eight. And then seven, eight on the fifth string. And then walk down. Like that, seven, eight, seven, five, seven, open. That is that riff. Now, he does that a couple times, and I believe it ends up fading out. And there is a variation he throws in, I believe, on the fourth time, and it's more like a. Just wanna. Get a little bluesy feel there. Explore it, have some fun, all right? And that's the song. That's the rhythm guitar part. So now let's cycle back, back to the solo. So the solo, it's pretty straightforward, it's very, very Cantrell, right? He's gonna start off. And it's basically like a, a four phrase or a four sentence guitar solo, but it's basically this one phrase twice, second phrase twice. So it's not that bad, okay? So we're gonna start in third position. We're gonna do one of those, okay? So it's trills, not a trill, just a slur, hammer on pull off slur, three, five, three open. And then do that on the second string. And one of those, right? Think open position pentatonic, second fret G string. That's our phrase right there. And now the second time you do it, do one of those little open string ring outs, three and five on the second string, up to five and three, and then back down. Okay, those are the first two phrases. And then you do some unison bends, right? E minor pentatonic for the most part, 12th position, 12 on the high string, 15 of the B, and then 14 of the B, I'm sorry, 12 on the B, 14 of the G, and then eighth position, same bend. We have, right?
And then you have that mimic. It's basically the same thing here, but now you're on 9 and 11 with the open B. And then the second time we do it, it's 9, 11, 12, 9, 11. Last F sharp, 11. Okay, and like I said, he trails off and he does a little more secondary parts in the background. Feel free to explore, right? And that is the last of my kind from Alice in Chains. More awesome drop D goodness from Alice in Chains. It's a great album. There are lots of really good, solid Alice in Chains post Lane Stanley. I encourage you to look at them. Black Gives Way to Blue is a great album. Devil Put Dinosaurs Here is a great album. Lots of great songs. So down in the description below, you can find the links for the tab. And as always, let me know what you come up with. So until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.